Bill Knipe is in the studio with us here, and he's here to talk about the House of Hope and what they're doing. You know, the House of Hope has been around six, eight years? 2012. 2012. Okay. Yeah, that's about eight years, yeah. And uh, when did you get involved with the House of Hope? Now, that yeah. was, a, that was a, a project started by... Um, Ken? Ken, Ken Bailey, Bailey, was it? Bailey yeah. and Dolly Garrison. Yeah. Uh, they first started it, and I think Kathy Golden was involved. I think she helped to uh, get the 501c3 mm -hmm. established. Mm -hmm. And I got involved in 2016. Uh, I, was the, uh, I was the director for about a year. And then um, Dolly retired. And then so it was like, I can't be director and they were looking mm -hmm. for a board right. president. So I came on board as a board president. And then uh, Roy Thomas came in as a, dire or a director I think I'm trying to remember because I'm I'm getting old myself. So <laughs> so anyway, that's how and I've been on the board uh, yeah. for all that time, and then um, I'm kind of stepped back into the director's position right okay. now. Yeah. So. So, so well, yeah. let me Go ahead. To, to clarify. If I'm sure our audience knows what House of Hope is, but in case they don't, can you give us you a bet. little insight? Uh, House of Hope is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We uh, help the homeless, your homeless, and jobless. And so our goal is to hopefully bring them in. We have basic services like food and showers and, mm -hmm. and laundry facilities. And then we have case management to help them with jobs if they need help with housing. Maybe they're getting behind on their you know, utility bills. Right. They're about to be evicted. All those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. uh, we're there to help them as well. Uh, another project. Of, of that is Hope Cottages. Mm -hmm. And that is down there, uh, just right there with uh, St. John's Episcopal Church. And that's that's a transitional housing facility for single moms and their children. And unlike House of Hope, where we're just kind of, we're, we're bringing them in, we're helping them some, and then uh, they kind of go on. Uh, the women and their children who are there, they're there for any more is like six months to a year maybe. And they're, they're in that situation where mm -hmm. they're homeless and we're trying to get them back up on their feet, mm -hmm. you know, get them, get right. them established, right. get settled, and get back into that uh, routine of getting used to being more self-reliant right. rather than, you know, always looking for, for help from other people. Right. And then the, the third project we have is the warming station, and that's just fixing the start. Fixing to start. Yeah. We time. almost started it yesterday, and then the temperature changed on us. But uh, right now, the forecast for mm -hmm. Thursday is a low of 30. Is that something you did so. last year, too? <clears throat> yes, we did. Okay. And that started a year before that with Cindy mm -hmm. Dickey, who that brand new church. Mm -hmm. They had they had a, a facility up there. They were doing that within the church, a warming station. And then uh, Harrison Faith stepped up, and they came on board with her. So they each, you know, B and C in the north and right. Harrison mm -hmm. Faith in the south. So then the following year, Cindy called me and said, you know what, maybe, maybe it would be better if it was in town so that, you know, people, they wouldn't have to travel because we, they were literally, literally driving down the House of Hope, getting people and driving them back up. Gotcha. So last year, we had it at House of Hope. And so, um, you know, we're just, House of Hope is just, we're one of the sponsors. Our, our part of the sponsorship is that we're providing the facility. Uh, what we really need is, is the manpower as well. And mm -hmm. so we had, uh, last year we had actually a total of eight sponsors. There was uh, seven churches and the 688th Engineering Company, uh, Army Reserve Unit, and they were helping. Uh, this year, uh, that unit I think moved up to Springfield. So um, we're now sitting at about, I think we have six committed, ready mm -hmm. to go sponsors, six from last year. And so we're, uh, you know, we need to get one more field to, to complete the week. And then, of course, the more the better. And they man the, okay, what do the sponsors do? So what, what a sponsor does is, and it's, like I said, if it's a church, so they may get a couple or three people, you know, their night is Tuesday night. And so if, if it's determined that it's going to be cold Tuesday night, mm -hmm. then they will get that group of people and they will come in. The way it's kind of forming or what they're finding out is that I think it works best for a lot of them if they have one group of people to deal with the food mm -hmm. and another mm -hmm. group of mm -hmm. people to spend the night. 
and so that's kind of how it's working out. And so, so, so the warming true. station is an overnight thing. It, it is an overnight. Okay. It's an overnight thing, okay. and the requirement is, uh, you know, the fire marshal, of course, and everything is that you have to at least keep one person awake during that time because oh, okay. right. everybody yeah. else is sleeping. Um, the uh, the Army Reserve Unit gave us uh, military cots, mm -hmm. so we have cots, we have blankets, and so they literally come in. They uh, the sponsors feeds them takes mm -hmm. care of them in that way, um, helps them how they can. And then, um, you know, you, usually, you know, by 9 o'clock, they, they're ready. They, they want to, they got a nice warm place to sleep, and they're ready to go to sleep. Right. So your plea is really for volunteers to help for, with that yes, overnight. Yes, either, yeah. either as an organization or individually. Okay. Because you think about it, if we had 14 sponsors, well, then you only have to do it half as often. Right. Mm -hmm. And last year, we... We, um, we were actually open for the 94 days that we were available to be open. We were open 61 of them. And so, um, and so that ends up to being about maybe two or three nights of the month we're doing it. So if mm -hmm. you can cut that in half, yeah. of course, that would help a lot. So that's an immediate need that you're looking for right now. Yes. And we have information on how people can contact you on the screen, or it should be on the screen at okay. some point. But... Right. Uh, but, uh, I, do, it, I do have to plug okay, go uh, ahead. Autumn, Autumn James, who is, uh, she has a cleaning service. Mm -hmm. um, she is, she, uh, we talked the other day, and she said that she was going to, that she will come in, like, first thing in the morning and sanitize all the cots. Okay. And, and take care of all the blankets, make, clean them up and everything for free. Oh, good. Okay. And so I just want to plug her I, for it, that. That's the whole good. COVID thing has certainly you know, increase the challenge of this whole project. Yes, because I'll be honest with you, last year, yeah, yeah, we kind of did that, but it just didn't seem like it was that important. But it sure is different this year. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so Autumn stepped up and said, hey, we'd be glad to do that for us. Mm -hmm. So I just had to. Yeah, you bet. Right. Yep. Give her a plug. <laughs> right, that's right. Anything else you want us to know? Um, just You have a just, note there. Yeah, I, I, of course. I, I have a couple of notes. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, with regard with the cottages, just to give you an update, uh, we have the one building. That is what we call Building C. That is, we're hoping to be done and ready by Thanksgiving. Okay. And that's the building that has the kitchen and, and the laundry facilities. So we're about done with that. Then the last phase of that is what we call Building B. And that building is, um, will be ADA, access, you know, mm -hmm. handicap mm -hmm. accessible mm -hmm. uh, for special needs uh, families. Um, so that's once we get done with C, then the next yeah, that'll be the next project of that. Are there any personal needs that like our viewers could donate besides time? Mm -hmm. I mean, financially, um, on a, you know, items. Always, always, like you that? know, financially, you know, you always, you know, all all nonprofits right. need right. need help, and so you know, of course, uh, that kind of thing. Um, we started up a um, so we were all we were always part of the Amazon Smile mm -hmm. thing. Well, right now, our uh, Kelly Hines is our marketing and media uh, manager. She's helping us with that, and she set up a uh, Amazon Smile wish list. So if you want to go out to Amazon and look up, look up House of Hope, you'll see some items that we're just starting mm -hmm. to, to form that. Okay. okay. And so those are immediate, immediate needs uh, for, like, the House of Hope. Okay. And you can probably purchase things right there and then be shipped to... Exactly. We had, we actually got that idea from, you know, um, uh, someone in the community and mm -hmm. said, "Hey, but but I don't want to get out. You know, I'm I'm worried on things like sure. that. Have yeah. you guys thought about this? Because he said, if you did, I would buy something to help you. And sure enough, mm -hmm. we put it out there. Okay. Sure enough, I, I know what we got was from her, though we really don't know. But you know, it was, it was just yeah. a good way to, well, it's to make that people happen. aware that this is an option for sure. Yes. getting the word out. Yes. Yes. Instead yeah. of yes. One thing that Amazon also does is if you have a, a nonprofit organization that you that you want to donate to through all of your purchases, right? A certain you percentage. can you can set up yep. that also. So it's yep. not a huge amount, right? But, but it, every little a, bit helps, for right? Sure. And when you log in, instead of logging in like going just to the regular Amazon account, you'd go into smile.amazon. Okay. You use your same login; it operates exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. But somewhere in there, there's a I can't remember if it's on the right side of the screen. Somewhere it says, well, who do you want to donate to? Right. And you simply you select Harrison House of Hope, 
and okay. and that's just automatic. Yeah. It just happens. That's nice. Great. Well, right. Bill, thanks so much for being here. Is there here. anything else? I yeah. Ask well, I want um, just oh. bis business is brisk. Uh, oh, I, I, I looked up a couple percentages just real quick. Uh, the activity we've had between uh, September and October has risen 27 percent, wow. and mm -hmm. since Jan or since June, it's up 97 percent. So, especially I think with COVID, there's there's a lot going yeah. on, yeah. And, okay. and so clearly there's a lot of need out there. Um, you know, the homeless and, and that. Absolutely, so. yeah. and that's what you're there for. Yes, sir. Yes, Thanks sir. so much for being here. Appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Up next, we have Beth. Kevenberger and Jessica Kibling. They're here to, from the Boone County Library, and uh, we'll be talking to them in just a few seconds. Stay with us.